Hello everyone, this is the Southern Hellenic. Um, I am I am an author of mystery and fantasy. So in this video, I'm going to be doing an update on a video that I posted, I think it was about a month ago, about a, um, about a book about a girl who is the, um, who's a demigod and she is, uh, she goes on this journey. So, <laughs> with that being said, um, I have to announce that the story is kind of, the story has changed a lot, but it is still, but it is a book that I'm still publishing and all that, but it's actually going to come out in um, August, <laughs> August of next year. So the title of the book has changed to Stolen Souls, and this is an urban fantasy book as also considered to be an urban noir book. And so um, what I did was I really decided to kind of get, <laughs> kind of do something different with that book. So the whole premise of it has changed. It's an entirely different world. It is an urban fantasy because it takes place in the here and the now. Now, Percy Jackson is classified as urban fantasy because it has the fantastical within, um, like, New York. But this one is very different from, um, from what you would think about. So... It is very. It is. It is going to be extremely different than books like Percy Jackson and all that. And it being an urban noir puts it in a very different world. A very. It is. It is as far away from Percy Jackson as you can possibly get. And um, I did watch the first episode of the show, and it was um, really good. I was surprised, but. Anyways, it's about a woman called Diane Greystone. She is a detective with the Louisville Police Department. I live here in Louisville, so I wrote about where I've lived, where I live. And in this world, you have um, vampires, werewolves, uh, zombies. You have drugs that are created by magic or th through magic, but the most important aspect of this book is the polytheist aspect to it. So in this world, a vast majority of the earth is still polytheistic because the gods are real. The gods do walk among humankind. They do see them and everything. And it is uh, it is a it is a world governed by the gods. Um, Christianity and Islam are they are around, but they're kind of like a very small group of people. They're, it's just another temple, just another you know club that people join or people go to. Um, so um, there's a lot of stuff that goes on in this book and. The book is basically about uh, someone is going around and not just killing people, but also taking their souls. So when Hermes comes along, there is no soul for him to collect, to send down to the underworld. Um, so you have gods like Hell and Anubis and Osiris and, of course, Hades, who... Um, are very pissed off that the souls they are supposed to collect for their individual um, underworlds are not there. You also include Odin and um, Freya. So they are, so the gods are very well aware of each other. There's no division between Patheons. Like, for example, is if you look at like the Cain Chronicles, there is a river that separates the Egyptian pantheon from the Greek pantheon. It does not exist in this book at all. 
the Norse gods, they sometimes will have have drinks with the Egyptian gods and you know things like that. And it is it is a book written, of course, by a polytheist, moi. Um, and I'm just having a lot of fun um, with it. And the thing about it is, is that people might say, well, you're kind of going to Ryden's territory. Like, what territory does he possibly own? What possibly does he own um, that I'm even remotely interested in getting involved in? Um, Ryden has this little urban fantasy series and it's set in New York City and all this jazz, but you don't have archivers, you don't have horny werewolves, you don't have vampires to walk around during the day and tell you that you haven't paid your taxes. Um, we find out the IRS is actually run by blood-sucking vampires. It is a thing that we learn in the course of this series. My brother's laughing. <laughs> right, <laughs> your blood. Um, yeah, I mean, literally, you have a scene where a vampire IRS agent feeds on this woman who is $20,000 behind on her taxes. That's how you get your taxes settled. <laughs> um, but it is, it, it is a very interesting world that you create within the realm of urban fantasy. And this is urban noir, and the gods are around, and they're active, and they are have active worshippers, and they accept, um, you know, animal sacrifice, and the Norse gods accept human sacrifice, and the Celtic gods accept human sacrifice, and there's, like, bog parties where people, like, willingly get tied up and thrown into bogs. Uh, it's a bog party. Everybody goes to one, <laughs> either when they're high, drunk, or both. Um, it's a, it's a very interesting world, and I, I, you know, when I started having trouble with, um, with, with my original idea for this, um, for this girl, I was like, something inside me is telling me that this is a book that is never, ever going to see the light of day at all. Because if I'm having trouble, if I can't get my scenes together, if I can't figure out what the fuck is going on with this story, it's like, well, maybe I need to go into a form of fantasy that is a little is a lot more easier for me to get scenes done right and all that so it is it's it's a very interesting one and you know you have you have ikati and it's interesting is in this world the gods because they exist they do have an opinion they do have a point of view they do have a belief that even they themselves hold within them and it is this belief that they make very vocal to people that think they know better than the gods and it's interesting so you know you have Hermes that comes to the police station and there is you know she 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 bows to him um, because here is an Olympian, you know, you have to bow to an Olympian. And he goes and he's basically telling her that the souls I'm supposed to be collecting are not there and we need, you know, we need to find out what's going on. Another thing is my, is she teams up with Hades in this book. Yes, she teams up with the Lord of the Dead. And they both have to try to find out exactly what is going on with, like, who is collecting these souls so that he does not receive them. And he is not going to be depicted as being evil or double-handed or, du or whatever. He's going to be, this is why I'm helping you because I need to get these souls because of the order of the universe and of course they encounter Thoth and Anubis and a couple of other um, deities so it's very much Hades going out among the people among the living to try to find the dead and bring them where they need to go um, so it's it's a very interesting um, concept and I thought well this works a heck of a lot better than trying to create a fantasy that takes place in ancient Greece 
Would it be really great if there was a world in which you had the gods and they are they are very much present in everybody's lives and there are actual sections of the city that are actually devoted to like an entire pantheon of one of or like the entire a single pantheon so you have like um the city that has a really bad like crime rate and most of them or all of them are devoted to the Norse gods so they have so they have like so during certain times they have like these big dining halls where they all come together and everything so it's a really interesting concept to bring like the Norse Egyptian Greek Roman gods to um, into this modern world but definitely not the way that Rick Ryden does it. Because you include all these other things. You include, you know, sewer witches and um, the homeless aren't, some of them are not exactly like, they're not, they're not what you think they are. They're different. Or you have furies that, not furies, but um, harpies that attack buses. Um, or harpies that pick people up off the ground and like eat them in midair. Um, you know, you have, um, you know, you have hydras and centaurs and you got Beowulf and you have all of these fantastic, um, creatures and gods and all that. And I always will make this clear that I always, I'm always going to base this on archaeological evidence. Um, but it's also kind of interesting is because in my world, events like the Inquisition and uh, yes, the Black Death still happened. <laughs> I was so dead. Did the Black Death still happen? Yeah, the Black Death still happened. But you go and you have like no Inquisition. There's no tearing down of temples, all this stuff. So the religions are allowed to continue on unabated. So I'm currently on chapter three. Um, they have met Hermes. And so in, so in chapter three, you're going to go to the house of Hades, but I'm going to call it something. I'm going to call it what the Greeks called it. And basically she actually is going to go down to the underworld to talk to Hades and Persephone, um, because it is, because if people want to know what time of year it is, it is actually fall, so Persephone is out down in the underworld, so we do, are, we are going to have Hades and Persephone talking to her, um, and all that, so it's really interesting, I really hope that you guys will enjoy it, um, I will make one thing very, uh, very apparent in the book, there is human sacrifice in this book so um if you're if you're not happy with that you don't have to read it but um i am going to do a um a once a week blog where i will be talking about my experience writing this book um it is going to be 43 chapters it's going to be well over 500 pages so it's going to be a pretty thick book um so, yeah, and um, I'm not going to be releasing it in hardback. It's actually going to be released in paperback because I have to spend $149 for a program to turn it into a uh, paperback, though, not paperback, hardback, though I do think the Amazon KDP also does hardback. Uh, we'll see what happens. So, I will see you guys around. Hope you guys have a really great um, day, and I'll see you. I'll see you out there. Bye.